Hello everybody, welcome back here to the channel. I'm Evil Rabbit. We have a Sesto Elemento sitting here in the pit of Spa. Because I was given this idea by a good buddy of mine, Nate, aka Christmas. You guys may have seen him many a times on the channel. He gave me an idea about building a Drift Lamborghini. Well, we're going to do that, but I decided to take what he said and go a little bit different. We're going to start with the factory Kunos Sesto, go from ground up with data changing, some modeling and stuff like that to make it a drift car. So we're going to take it for a spin here at Spa Factory because I don't think I've actually ever driven this car. So we're going to go for a full send. Make sure you guys follow me on all social media. I'll try the description box below. We're going to take a lap here and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty of doing some changing and stuff like that. Like I said, I don't think I've ever actually driven this car. Oh, I forgot, I don't need clutch. So I figured we'd go for a rip here on Spa and see what we can do. Oh man. This car has so much power off the rip that we're not gonna need to do too much changing when it comes to power. Oh, we getting a little slippy already? Let's uh, mess with some traction control there. So it's already getting a little bit slippy, cold tires, uh, but we're not gonna need to do too much power change. We wanna do this as almost as realistic as possible. So we will have to do some drivetrain changes and stuff like that. Ooh, this is, this thing gets really squirrely, all right. Let's try traction control level two. So this thing's already getting spoiled, it's all wheel drive, it's huge. So you know we're gonna be converting it, making sure it's real drive, adding a sequential style transmission into it. I mean we're already sliding. <laughs> and making sure we get a clutch in there and of course handbrake and stuff like that. So it's going to be a full data swap initially, and we'll get into that here in this episode. We're gonna start doing some of the data suspension and things like that, making sure our inertias and everything are correct to a real car to keep it as realistic as possible when it comes to weight distribution, the inertia of the car. Oof. <laughs> and it's gonna definitely be a fun car to drive and a definitely a fun car to drift. But of course, you know, we're going to make a secondary car of it so we don't actually uh, overwrite this car so we can go back to this car for data. I didn't need it right there. Totally forgot the track for a second. So we can go back and recheck the data that Kunos has put into the car from the factory. So definitely going to be a very fun build series. It's going to be a few episodes long because instead of making, you know, just a, you know, four or five hour episode. We'll break it down and do certain things on certain episodes. Oh, those brakes definitely need to be given some love. So for actually never driving this car, it actually feels pretty good on, you know, the R9 with the RS steering wheel. Run out to factory RS for this one. So overall, I feel like it's gonna be a fun time. This car is a great looking model. So we're gonna be doing a lot of changes and a lot of things. Definitely gonna be adding some seats, some roll bars, probably stuff like that. And probably changing out the wheels and the steering wheel and some body stuff. But we're not gonna do too crazy of modeling on it. Oh jeez. So we're gonna hop over onto the desk computer monitor and get into doing the nitty gritty with the data. So I'm gonna catch you guys once we go over there. So let's do a little bit of, uh, you know, cinema, cinematic, you know, editing magic. All right, so now we are on the desk on my other monitor, not in the rig. So, which is really nice to have a desk now. I don't have to do all this stuff in my rig. It makes it a whole lot easier. The first thing we need to do is actually make a secondary version of the Sesto Elemento so that we aren't overriding the Kunos one so we can come back to the data. The main thing that we need to make sure we do is this one's already unpacked. You need to make sure you do this unpacked data. So for sake of, oh well, you would click unpack data and it would give you 
the data folder. You need to make sure you have a data folder, not the data file. If you have the data file, you won't be able to change the name of the car. So once we have it unpacked and everything with all the data for all the suspension, because we're going to be going through this and changing a lot of stuff, we can go into cars. We can copy this and make a copy of that folder. Go back to our desktop and we're just going to paste it to the desktop. So now this is a secondary car, but what we're going to do is we're going to rename it all lowercase with uh, underscores. That's how the game likes to read it. So that's usually how I name most of my stuff. We're going to copy that and then we're going to go into it. Now, this car based on Kuna Cars has 4K and 5s because the 4K and 5s are based off of the distance it renders in the game. So you don't have to have 4K and 5s. Most of my cars only have one. A lot of pro cars, drift cars, all those things only have one. You don't need four. So we're actually going to go in here. We're going to delete B, C, and D. We're going to rename our main K and 5 to the same name that we set the file folder. And then we need to go into data and adjust the loads or the LODs. So you're going to go into data. You're going to find the LODs. Now, as you can see, there was all four of the loads, LODs, however you want to say it. If you notice different rendering distance, in, out at 15, in at 15, out at 45, in at 45, blah, 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 all the way to 2,000. We're actually going to delete all of those except the one, and then we're going to rename it .kn5 to the same name that we renamed the kn5 folder. And then we're going to adjust this to 15. Hundred, so that's the out. So it's going to come. The model is going to be viewable in at zero and out at fifteen hundred. You could do any number you really want. A thousand to two thousand is probably good. I know most comp cars and stuff like that are meant to be at a thousand, so it's not super taxing on people's other computer. Because if you're all the way down the track, you know, fifty miles away, your car doesn't need a load in the game. So it helps people with PCs that are not maybe the best. So we we're going to do fifteen hundred. We're going to do Control S or Make sure you save it. So now our LOD file matches our KN5. So our car will actually load into game. So that's that what we need to do. And then car, it still says, you know, screen name, Lambo, Sesto, Elemento. We're going to adjust that a different way. So now that we have it named differently and it's a different file, we can actually drag this into Content Manager and it will install it like a new mod. So we're going to drag it into Content Manager. And then you click on it, it's going to load it in as a new mod. So it shows right here, as you can see in the green, or if you went Evil Rabbit, it's going to show right here. So this is the one we're going to work on. But I'm going to go into here and adjust the name of it so I don't get it confused. I just do it straight in Content Manager because it's easier for me to do it this way. And then all I have to do is click there to quickly save it. Close your content manager. It'll ask you to save, save your changes, open your content manager back up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, simple. Now we have it different. Now, if you were to go back to here, it is no longer going to be next to the Sesto. So we want to keep this because we're going to need files from this to verify. So we're going to open up those files. I don't think I need to open that twice. So we're going to bring the main files that we need to work with right now is the car file, which we're going to open up because we need to know the inertias that Kunos put in, the graphical offsets that Kunos put in. So we need to pull these from the factory Sesto. And then we also need to pull in the suspension folder, which is also what we need for center of gravity, wheelbase, and the base heights and all that stuff, track width and things. So these are from the factory Kunos Sesto. We're going to be using those factories. So now we go back to our drift Lambo. We're going to actually pull the car and the suspension setups from my competition E36. It's as simple as take car and take suspension, copy both of them. And we're going to close that and you're going to go into there and then you're going to go into the car you want to change it to and just control V and replace the two files. So now that we have the car folder here, it's going to say evil you know, the ESDA Andrew, because that was what it was. I almost said rando, not rabbit. And we're going to just change the name of this so we don't get them confused. We're going to save that. And then we're also going to open up the suspension. So now these are very important when it comes to adjusting the suspension and things like that. So we have those two. And then we have 
the other two from the factory sesto so we have the factory sesto as you can see the difference in wheelbase is a lot so our gravity location is also different because well rear engine and front engine as well as graphical offsets inertias are way off so we're gonna have to adjust that now the inertias you're not really gonna notice this is what you're really gonna notice this stuff and the graphical offset because when we go into the actual car in cm showroom and i align it with data this car is going to be broke very broke so we need to fix the brokenness that is this car so we're going to start simply by going with the car first we want to make sure we get our weight changed over so the car has the weight that is supposed to be there control s or save and then we want to make sure we get these inertias correct so you can just copy these inertias over throw them in to this side control v control s or file save however you feel fit if you have quick key commands or you just want to do it that way so you know you physically do it there you go so this doesn't really change this the graphical offsets will so what we're going to do is we're going to put the graphical offsets that it shows on the actual game which is 36 and then positive 164 so we're going to get rid of the negative and we're going to file save if you notice things did start changing on the actual car so with that being said now we need to adjust the suspension portion of the car which is our center of gravity and our wheelbase so we're going to pull up our two different suspensions on the left side here is the factory sesto and this is the new one so we need to adjust wheelbase which is going to be 560 and if we go file save you notice the wheelbase shrunk in there so now we need to change the center of gravity location because that's going to definitely change the positioning of the wheels so we're going to go to center of gravity 435 and we're going to file save and we should be pretty close as you can see we are back centered up but what's different now is our ride height and our uh track width so ride height on the factory sesto is 15 so if we change this to 15 we're up in the correct wheelbase and the rear is also 1.5. So we're going to change the base seat, which is the right height of the suspension, 1.5. So now we're there. So now we can mess with our poke. Uh, so I am actually probably going to go a little bit wider than what they recommend because drift poke. So um, we can get rid of this now and we can get rid of the original Sesto. We're only really working with this one. I think we can go 172, control S, there's a little bit of poke now. We may have to raise the base a little bit more just to appease that poke, but we don't want to go too, too high. So, all right, that actually doesn't look too bad. We got a little bit of poke, and now we got to work on the rear, which is really far in. So I think we're going to see if we can get 1.6 track width. That's way too much. All right, 158. Five six five six five five six five seems like that could work. So now we have that set up. We have our center, and I believe we are pretty center. We're gonna raise the back a little bit more to five five. We can adjust that later when it comes to actual suspension travel and things like that, but this is just for this. So now we have the Sesto there. And if we actually steer the wheels, we're good. We're not clipping through the fenders or anything like that. We have way more lock now because with the car file and the steering lock and all of the rod lengths and everything like that, it's going to give us about 70 degrees worth of steering lock. So now we have all the data in place for suspension. We need to do drivetrain so we can make this car not all wheel drive anymore and go rear wheel drive. So with that, we're going to pull the drivetrain out of another car. So we're going to go get the drivetrain and everything all set up now. So let's go do the drivetrain and uh, then maybe get this on track and give it a first shakedown. For drivetrain, what we're really going to do is we're actually just going to go into the Huracan GT3 car. And we're going to pull the drivetrain out of there because this drivetrain is a real drive drivetrain. Uh, but it still keeps the engine and everything where it should be and things like that. So we're going to pull the drivetrain out of this one. We're going to make sure that everything is correct with that. Gearbox. 
inertia cut off change and time forced on so we're going to copy this real quick and then we're going to go into our drift lambo and we're going to paste that drive line in so now that the drive line is in here the car will be rear wheel drive so but what i want to do is i want to mess with trying to get rid of clutch we're going to increase the clutch force or add clutch i would say we're going to save that real quick but i want to remove this forced on because i don't my drift cars don't have that and then we're going to leave all the other stuff kind of the same and see if that actually works for us we're going to file save that and then we're going to go hop into the game real quick and see if that actually works if that works we're going to do a quick test on this in its current state and see where we're at so we're gonna hop over into the onto the other monitor into the rig and see where we're at all right so we're here at driftland aussie we do have the sesto out so we want to make sure we're going to go into cockpit view so we're going to put clutch in go into gear so we have a clutch and we do have i believe some good steering acrimen yeah we definitely have a lot of steering angle in this car now so we may have to raise the car a little bit but overall, not too bad. So we're going to go first rip. We don't have braking or anything set up. So we don't have um, handbrake or anything like that. But this is just going to be first test. I feel like we still have trash control. We do. So we're going to turn that off. Oh, yep. Yeah. You can definitely feel the rear wheel drive. Oh, boy. All right. So, well, we'll send with just a uh, clutch kick. Keep on pull that. We don't have that. Ooh, definitely need some camber adjustment and grip in the front. But for the factory tires, this is not too bad. We definitely need some brake bias adjustment. For first initial drive, this is uh, not too bad. I've been a little bit light feeling on the wheel, and I think it has to do with the grip level and the tires. That was a nasty clutch kick though. And I thought this would feel super weird, but it actually feels pretty good. And we're getting some solid lines. Car has plenty of power. Gonna have to do some gear ratio changing, but for first initial setup, this thing is pretty nasty. Kind of just said forget car. Take a look at the box cam of it. I think it was the second lap that we were actually getting better. So, it is out and it's sliding. So if you guys want to keep seeing the build on this car, let me know down in the comments and as well as follow me and subscribe to the channel. We gotta do some ride height adjustments and things like that. That was a nasty full lock. This car is going to be so much fun to build. Hope you guys come back and watch more episodes. As always, I thank you guys for coming back and watching. I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the track. That car gets it already. Oh, dragon bumper.